Okay, so welcome to part three of our discussion on uh, Green's theorem. So in this video, uh, we're going to uh, generalize the result that we have already attained. So, um, so the result that we've got so far is that uh, if you take the line integral uh, of the vector field, uh, so let's have a vector field. So firstly, Green's theorem is about a two-dimensional plane. So you have R2 and you have uh, V, uh, this function which is mapping R2 onto R2 uh, and it ascribes to every little point a vector, um, i.e. an element of R2. Uh, so you also have some curve, uh, gamma, uh, which uh, is oriented in the positive sense, which just means that if you traverse the curve, uh, on your left uh, will be the uh, inside of the curve. Okay, um, and if you take every little vector um, so if you go to a point, it has a vector ascribed to it on this curve, and uh, we want to add up uh, the components of this vector in the direction that you move. So we want to dot product it with dr, and we want to add them all up around the curve. And Green's theorem, uh, with what we've shown so far, is that this is equal to uh, the double integral over uh, the inside of gamma, so this region uh, denoted i gamma, which is uh, this inside region, this region bounded which has um, gamma as its, as its boundary. Uh, if you integrate over that uh, region uh, the function which is, uh, well let's, let's denote v is equal to uh, p which is a function of x, y and uh, q which is a function of x, y. So x, p is the uh, x component of this vector field and q is the y component of this vector field then uh, it's the integral of q uh, partially differentiated with respect to x minus p partially differentiated with respect to y and then obviously dx dy. Okay, so so far we've shown that this is true if if uh, this gamma has some very heavy uh, restrictions placed on it. Uh, so you have to be able to divide it effectively. It has to have its endpoints. Uh, we'll call those a and b and. Um, it has gamma has to take the form of two curves effectively, uh, which have the, these two as its endpoints, and uh, they are like that. I.e., um, if you take any value at k, at x value, which is k, uh, then it can only intersect uh, the get curve gamma in two places. Or if you pick a and b as your uh, x value, uh, then it will only intersect at one point. And the same has to be true uh, if you view it as a function x, as a function of y. Uh, you have to have two endpoints, let's call them c and d. And uh, again, you have to have basically two curves suspended between here. Uh, so you're not allowed, for instance, you're not allowed something like that. Uh, that wouldn't, uh, that in our, as far as we're concerned, doesn't work yet. And what we're going to show is that this, that we can apply Green's theorem to this uh, if we just, um, if we just generalize. It, uh, the fact that it's true around something of this form implies that it's also true around uh, around a curve of this form, and that's what we're going to show in this video. Okay, so firstly, let's say the first generalization we're going to do is let's take something of the form um, let's take something of the form a box. So let's let gamma equal a box around there. So at the moment uh, we've got these. Um, We've got these uh, point. We've got these lines, these vertical lines, and these horizontal lines. And this certainly doesn't look to obey this condition up here because uh, we have x is equal to let's say a. This is, and there's absolutely loads of y uh, y points which all um, which all have x is equal to k. So it doesn't seem to obey our conditions uh, for um, for Green's theorem to apply. Uh, so let's, let's try and understand why Green's theorem is going to work still. Uh, for this rectangular case. Okay, uh, so uh, the reason is, 